What's up guys and welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of the Bubba Spade career mode in MotoGP 20 and the first race actually went really really well we finished second um technically we finished first but due to a bullshit penalty we ended up being um like a couple of tenths of a second behind Mazia who ended up uh officially winning the race so of course sitting second after the first uh after the first Grand Prix of the season that's not bad at all um we're racing on a bike that definitely has some has some deficiencies but I feel like we can definitely work around that and if we can get a good a better bike and maybe some better staff then maybe we can definitely uh, improve a lot so we're gonna go ahead and boost up some synergy by hiring better better um, technical staff um, which is actually kinda cool because I like the fact that you know a lot of that a lot of progression isn't just solely based on you actually getting better at the game a lot of it actually depends on how good you perform the offers you receive and things of that nature so I just I think it's a really really cool system and it's a very very welcome system and of course in the circuit of the Americas in Austin Texas Bubba Speed qualifies third unfortunately it's in the wet now so far I have never tried playing this in the rain um, it doesn't look like it's currently raining so at least there's that it's um, it's just a wet track but I haven't tried it before so you know, it's going to kind of be a learning experience. Of course, running really, really wide there, banging into Antonelli. And uh, luckily, don't crash. Because like I said in the previous episode, and if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend you watch it. Um, I feel like this is going to be a very, very good series. So hopefully you guys are, are excited about that too. And as I was saying, um, this game, unlike MotoGP 19 and really all previous games, it really does punish you for, for making mistakes and bumping into people. It's a lot more punishing, and it, I feel like it's a lot, lot more realistic there. So, you're going to be seeing a completely different Bubba speed as opposed to in, say, MotoGP 19, where, you know, pretty much no. There was zero interest in having to, in, uh, in avoiding banging into people. Actually, it was kind of an advantage to bang into people uh, and kind of use them to push you in the, right, uh, in the right direction. And the good thing about this is that they pretty much fixed everything that I was asking them to fix except for one thing which was uh, essentially uh, penalties and they're still pretty pretty strict with the penalties I feel like a lot of times you'll get one without actually deserving it um, but that's a, that's just something I have, to, I have to deal with and I understand why they do it especially because esports is such a big thing now and I remember when when uh, MotoGP I think it was 06 or 07 came out um, I played but the I did the first race online and I was just like wow like people are People are immensely cheese at this and uh, cheating constantly. So I understand why the penalties are there if they want to be taken seriously as an eSport. And fair enough. You know, fair play to them. No problems with it. And uh, I respect that 100% because, like I said, they fixed everything else. There's one thing that in particular really, really, really bothered me about previous games. And that is how bad the steering was um, up until you actually develop... In the previous game, like in the early games, like of like 14 and 15, your actual rider. In the later games, in 19 or 18, it was all about developing your bike. And essentially, if you didn't do it, um, or at least up until you did it, your bike was going to be just absolute garbage at searing. And you kind of had no choice but to bump into people in certain spots to actually, you know, stay on, basically stay on the, stay on the right trajectories and stay on the right lines and stuff like that. It was just a pain in the ass and really frustrating. But this game... The steering is so much better, and they really did fix a lot of things to where it just makes it so much more fun and so much more rewarding. Like, honestly, like I said in the previous video too, like I spent an hour in Qatar just trying to understand how the physics work and how to get more power coming out of turns and going into it. And I really, really love what they've done with the steering and what they've done where uh, when, when you're leaning, you can't actually, or you can hit the gas, you can, you can definitely hit the throttle, but you're not going to... You're not going to go flying. You're not just going to get you know build up a lot of speed. It's just going to kind of you're just going to spin the engine. You're not going to really do too much. So I love that because it adds a lot more realism. And I've actually been talking uh, to my dad about this. Of course, I've, I've mentioned it before. He is a, a former racer, um, so he knows a lot more about this. Uh, like hands-on wise, he knows what he's talking about. And you know he he's been playing a little bit too, and he's been saying the same thing. Like the game feels a lot more realistic than it ever has. It's been, uh, it's a really, really, really good game. So, when I when the review comes out, I guarantee you guys, Milestone will be getting a lot of compliments from me. Especially in, a, in an era where sports games just get worse and worse. This is actually just light years better than anything I've played from a, uh, from a racing simulation point of view. Not necessarily say, like, you can't really compare it to, say, Forza or Gran Turismo, because that's a different kind of genre, really, and 
in racing simulators, but this is definitely, I would say, uh, the best Metal GP game I've ever played. And of course, there's still a lot for me to learn about it, but so far it's just been an amazing game, and I'm extremely happy to have invested uh, invested my some of my money, especially in these you know difficult times for everybody. Uh, it is an investment, and I'm really really happy that I that I spent it on this. So just so far so good, man. I can't wait to see what else comes up and like this is a track that is just kind of a perfect example because I think I think B Bubba actually won last year in Austin or he did I think he performed really really well um I'm not 100% sure what the result was but I feel like Bubba did well um but generally I don't really like this track too much but in this game it's just really really fun to play on and I feel like they you know like I said because they fixed the steering and because there are so many sections like this where there's double apexes or really triple apexes and stuff like that and there's a lot of hairpins there's a lot of difficult turns to where there's a lot of runoff too like right there in say 19 or something like that because the steering was so bad I wouldn't be too frustrated about running wide or even right here like there I kind of got annoyed because I ran a little bit wide but you know in 19 I wouldn't care because the steering was so bad I was like you know what it's just kind of something you have to deal with you have to accept it, and you just have to keep going and just kind of, you know, exploit whatever you can. Um, and that's just kind of where I uh, where I was with the game. Like, right there, I'm not going to lie to you guys, just completely blew it because there's another excellent function, in my opinion, that they would add to the game, which is fuel consumption. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, um, I had to do this race twice. This is the only time that I'll restart during the season, and that's only because... Um, or actually, you know what? I'm, 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 I won't lie to you guys. I will only restart in two things, in two scenarios. Number one, if I ran out of fuel because I set it up to where fuel consumption was supposed to be, there, you know, actually above the expectation. So it's a four-lap race. I set it up to where it would last me for like five laps, and yet ran out of fuel with a lap and a half to go. So. That kind of annoyed me, and I didn't want it to end it like that because I would just kind of be trash. So I will be honest with you guys, uh, I did restart. And the only other scenario in which I will restart is if the AI does something stupid uh, and I crash out very early on. If it's laid out, if it's later in the race, I'm not going to because that's not really fair. Meanwhile, we got a penalty. Um, but that's that's just kind of the situation. So I hope you guys respect that, and I hope you guys understand my my reasoning. So I did do this one twice. Uh, ran out of fuel, and I think that's actually a really cool system because. Of course, if you look on the bottom right, there's the HUD, there's the traction control, um, there's the EBS, there's the power. So, what I do is, the first couple laps, when I'm in the middle of a battle or something like that, I'll leave power on two. I think you can only go one or two. So, uh, I always have it set up to two, set to the maximum, and I try to get as much of a lead as possible. Now, you can see the little fuel tank s symbol right there on the left side of the HUD. Um, sorry, not the HUD, but, you know, the... On the on the bottom right corner, on the left side of the little box thing there, where you can see the uh, where you can see all the all the all the details, all the stats and stuff like that, um, you can see the actual fuel tank itself. So right now at zero point zero point was uh, sorry zero one point four means I basically have a lap point four, almost a lap and a half left of fuel, and that's with low power, so low fuel consumption and all that. If um if I lower traction control and I lower power, then I will consume a lot of fuel very very quickly and I really do like that system because it's a lot more realistic and it's a lot it's a lot more uh, like genuine MotoGP because of course nowadays MotoGP bikes are so computer controlled that essentially you know you have multiple buttons on the bike to where you can kind of change the mapping and stuff like that to consume less, less fuel and depending on what the situation is in the race you can actually change that stuff and that's really really cool to see a really interesting addition and one that I'm looking forward to mastering and getting really good at luckily in this race, Bubba's just been extremely dominant, and I just feel like, like I said, the game is so fun to play, so rewarding, and it's just excellent to, uh, really excellent to see, and, um, I look forward to really getting better at the game, and play, putting it on, on higher difficulties. Right now, we're playing it on, uh, medium, borderline advanced, so look forward to, once I get more confidence with it, to actually upping the difficulty, and hey, you never know, like, Bubba... Bubba might actually be able to win the championship here. I mean, he's on the verge of winning his first race of the season after finishing second in kind of in kind of cheese fashion in uh, in Qatar. And of course, being his home race, it's extra it's extra important to win here. And then going into Argentina, where last season Bubba actually won. So you know, plenty of uh, plenty of positives to take away from this, unless Bubba makes a mistake. And I just feel like this hair turn right here, 
this hairpin, sorry. Uh, like, just the fact that the turns like that, which in the previous games were a nightmare to deal with, just so frustrating. And then to do it in this game, it's just, it feels so good, it's so rewarding, and that's just something I really want you guys to understand. Like, for you guys who maybe haven't played the game yet, or are, are kind of deciding whether or not to buy it, trust me, you will not be disappointed. Let's, like... Look at this, man. Like I, I blew the turn there, went in way too slow, but didn't want to make any mistakes. Didn't want to, didn't want to risk crashing. But it's just so, so much fun. Actually, ran really wide here as well. Lucky there's plenty of runoff. Have the chance to, to kind of cut back in and set yourself up perfectly fine. And this turn right here, this one, has been my nightmare for years now. And yet in this game, it's to the point where, it's just, it's just boom. It's perfect. It really is just perfect. Like. The steering is just, it just works. And of course, right here, you have this triple apex. Um, I really do like this section of the track right now. And just, this this game has really completely changed my feeling towards Circuit of the Americas, which means I'm really interested to see if maybe my thoughts on tracks like Austria or tracks like um, Thailand or Aragon and stuff like that, maybe I'll start to like those even more as, of course, we nail the final turn with 0 0.5 uh, fuel left. So... A hell of a performance there from Bubba Speed, who gets his very first win of the season. And Mazia, who I think started off kind of kind of far back, actually, ends up finishing second. So it looks like he's going to be our main rival for the season. Of course, remember last year, uh, Kanet actually started off rather poorly, and Antonelli was the guy that was giving us problems. And all of a sudden, Kanet in the second half of the season really started to... Uh, Really started to be extremely consistent and win a lot of races, so have to watch out for Mazia. He's going to be a tough guy, and Antonelli also going to be, it looks like he's going to be consistently in the top three. Suzuki's actually been surprising and been uh, performing really, really well, so it'll be, uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, season in my opinion. And of course, we are on even points with Mazia with a, one, with a win, a piece, and a second place a piece. So looking good, and um, our team, of course, is third right now with 45 points. That's something that... It's kind of going to be frustrating because, of course, Bubba's on a small team, so not really the best uh, opportunities in terms of development, but I'm sure that with good performances like this, he's eventually going to get good offers and uh, be able to move to better bikes. So who knows? Maybe he can actually move mid-season to a team that can, off that can offer him uh, you know, a, a good, solid foundation to potentially win the title and, uh, and then move up the Moto2 uh, in his third season, which, of course, would be... Which would be ideal. I would say if we can work it out to where Bubba does, you know, at most two seasons per, per you know, for, for Moto, Moto 3 and then Moto 2, and then move up the Moto GP and then try to win, you know, as many championships as possible there, I feel like that's pretty much going to be the ideal trajectory for this career mode. Whether or not that'll happen remains to be seen, but so far, so good for season two for Bubba Speed, improving upon uh, what he did last season. And of course, these are all the multipliers and all the research data and stuff like that did actually start to do more development tests because now i'm confident on the bike and now i feel like i can i can get uh i can get a lot going so if you guys enjoyed it please like button subscribe and i'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching